Today I want to talk to you about one of my favorite film cameras, um, the Olympus OM-1. I decided to make this video because if you can see behind me and there, I have a bookshelf <laughs> full of film cameras that I absolutely love and they're all different and special and they all have a little bit of history in them and I just want to share my knowledge and my experience using these cameras with you guys. This one here is my first film camera that I purchased myself. Obviously, when I was a little girl, my parents had a film camera, which was a tiny Kodak that I will talk about in a, in a future video, probably. But it was a full automatic one, it was the sort of camera that you would take with you on holiday and just take random holiday snaps and stuff like that. But this is the, the first proper SLR film camera that I purchased. I got it about maybe four or five years ago from eBay actually there was uh, an auction someone was selling it with a 50mm uh, lens the, basically the Zwickola one which is not the one that I currently have I have two Zwickola lenses at the moment but um, I don't think the person that was selling it knew exactly what he had on his hands so he I think the buy it now price or something like that was like 15 quid so I just messaged him and I was like, perfect, I just want to give you the £15 and then buy it. Um, he agreed, he did mention that the, the lens that was coming with had a small dent in it. Uh, but as far as he knew, the camera was fully functional and working. So I bought it. I first got it in. I did, before I, I decided to purchase this particular model, I did a ton of research on YouTube and Google and whatever. And I decided that this would be the perfect camera for me, mainly because it was full mechanical. So from what I was reading online, uh, it, they, they did mention that it didn't need any sort of batteries. It was a full manual uh, control camera with all the settings at the top, with the aperture dial around the lens. And that just attracted to me. In a way, I was thinking that if I'm buying a film camera, I just want to be able to just use it in manual mode every single time because that will kind of make me stop being lazy. I bought it, it even came with the original Olympus strap that you can still see online um, every now and again, the, the blue and cream color, which was unexpected. I, I didn't realize that it was coming with this. As soon as I got it in, I went in and I got a 35 millimeter film. I loaded in the camera. I looked at it very quickly. It has a ISO button at the top um, of the camera. And then around the lens, as you can see, you have the aperture. Next to the body of the camera, you have the shutter speed. So there's a dial here that I'm hoping the camera will pick that up. You have an on-off button on one side, the winder on the other one. On the back, you do have the viewfinder. I did add it the viewfinder cover. <laughs> the camera itself is a classic when it comes to, to film cameras, mainly because at the time that it was released, it was competing with models from Leica, and the, the main thing where this camera kind of changed the direction that the, the other film cameras were going at the time was that it was a, a, a lot, a lot smaller body. At the time when the camera was launched in 1972, there was a little bit of confusion between um, the Olympus OM-1, as we know it nowadays, and a model from Leica, the Leica M1. So at the time, Olympus had to settle for a different name, so that's when they added the OM um, in front of the name, so the model um, became known as the OM-1. Now, there are a couple models in the series, but this was the, their beginning point into their creation of SLR cameras. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the um, 
experience that I had with this camera. This one here is um, one of the first pictures that I took with the, the camera. It's uh, basically a parrot on someone's shoulder on the street. It's quite interesting because it was probably the first time around when I actually approached someone and I asked them if it's okay for me to take a picture of, of them. This was taken with the original 50mm um, Suiko lens that came with the camera, the one that had the little dent in it. The first roll of film that I used was a, a standard Kodak 24 exposure film. Then I developed it with Jessops. So the first roll of film that I put through the camera came out absolutely perfect. I was still at the time learning about manual settings and well learning how to use a film camera properly but I was really really lucky I'll say that the first roll of film came out absolutely perfect. Now the second roll <laughs> that I put into the camera I was very very excited. I took the camera out on a very very cold winter day. There was a lot of like frost going around and everything and I I took something that I think was the most amazing image ever it was this cobweb that was completely completely frozen unfortunately when I developed the film nothing came out I couldn't understand why I started thinking that there might be something wrong with the camera itself that the, the film might have been I don't know loaded incorrectly in the camera but nothing from that roll of film came out so I decided, well, let's give it another go. I bought another film, I put a film in, I again went out, took pictures. This time I went out and used it, not really hoping to get anything out of it, but just to actually use the camera and see what happens. And uh, the second <laughs> roll of film came out blank as well. Now, no matter what I was doing, the, the settings in the camera or the way that I was loading the film just wasn't there. Um, as I said, it was my first proper SLR camera, so I was still learning all these things. So I used my second roll of film and then I took it again to the lab to have it developed and um, guess what? That one came out completely blank as well. In a way it looked like it, it was going through the camera. Um, there were signs on the film that the, the film has actually gone through and tried to be actually exposed. but. My settings or something just wasn't working at all. So that was the moment when I actually asked a, a friend what his opinion is. And I found out even though the camera is um, fully mechanic, you don't need any batteries to run it, you pretty much just you need a film, you put it in, go out and shoot. The, the thing is the camera actually does have a tiny tiny battery that is basically helping you to make sure that your exposure, so like the metering in the camera, is absolutely perfect. Now, when you look through the viewfinder, you can see a tiny, tiny needle on one side of the, the screen that when you have a full battery, it will actually go up and down depending on the settings that you're using and the light that you're shooting in. When that needle is in the middle, basically that means you have the right exposure and then you can actually take the picture. Now, this was something that I didn't realize at the time. I didn't realize that there was an actual meter in the camera. And even though at the bottom of the camera, you can see there is a tiny, space for a battery right there, I never thought to, to check and to see exactly what that is. So the battery looks like this, it's a very very tiny one, but this is the, the one that helps out actually making sure that you, you get the right exposure in your camera and you won't have this horrendous experience that I had. I'm still thinking of that picture with the, 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 the spider web. Even though I had the digital camera with me at the time, I just didn't thought of taking one with my digital camera, just in case. I was like, no, it's going to be taken with the film camera and everything is going to be fine and I'm going to have the most amazing picture ever. Um, well, it didn't happen. I'm still after one of those cobwebs, so that's all. I'll, I'll find one someday. So yeah, my experience overall with the Olympus OM-1 was really, really good. One thing that I don't particularly enjoy was the, the grip. It doesn't really have a, a grip. So I, even on my X-T3 camera, I, I had actually added an extra metal grip just so that I can hold the camera a little bit better. This doesn't feel very comfortable to me. It feels like the camera can slip from my hand at any time. Now, the person that um, gave me the um, viewfinder um, cover, I think that's how they're called, also had a 
grip winder. I'm not completely sure if, if it actually works as it's intended because I haven't actually tried to put batteries in it or anything like that. But what I found works really, really nicely with this winder is that, I just put my finger on the lens, don't do that guys, um, is that you can mount it on the camera and then that offers you an extra grip. Having the extra grip there and being able to just still reach the shutter button on the camera makes a lot, a lot of difference. It's a lot comfortable to, to hold. In terms of the lenses, I don't tend to see a lot of, of Olympus lenses. Usually the, the, the 50mm Zico um, 1.8 lens is the most common one out there that you will find in most everywhere. Most of the times if I'm going out with camera I'll use a 50mm or I have a 28mm lens. Uh, those are my two favorite ones because they are very tiny. The camera itself is very very heavy so having a, a tiny small lens does help a lot. If you're thinking of buying a film SLR camera and you're a little bit unsure of what to go for, I think the OM1 is a perfect choice, mainly because it kind of pushes you out to just use manual settings and then do you know, your own thing, try and figure out the light and um, what the best settings are for whatever you're trying to photograph. They tend to be quite expensive at the moment. I was very, very lucky with this one when I bought it because, as I said, I don't think the person knew what it was selling at the time. But usually the, the OM1s in a good condition, they tend to start at about 60, 70 pounds and they can go up to a couple hundred. So they can be quite pricey. It's obviously not a, a Leica or a Nikon F that everybody keeps raving about. This, this is definitely out of my collection of cameras. Um, apart from my TLR cameras that I just started getting into, this is definitely my absolute favorite film camera and I, I would highly recommend it if you're interested in, in starting film photography get yourself an OM1 that's all for this video guys um, I will see you hopefully next week with a new video where I will be picking up another camera from that shelf over there and I'll go over it in uh, details with you guys thank you